New stealthy attacks are being used in the wild, signal upgrades encryption, and more Apple Zero Days. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. <laughs> Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for September 26, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week with DeadGlyph. DeadGlyph is a new sophisticated backdoor malware that has been recently seen in a cyber espionage attack against a government agency in the Middle East. DeadGlyph was created by a state-sponsored hacking group called Stealth Falcon APT, also known as Project Raven or Fruity Armor, believed to operate from the United Arab Emirates. This group has a history of targeting activists, journalists, and dissidents for almost a decade. The DeadGlyph malware is quite advanced, using an unusual architecture consisting of cooperating components in both native x64 binary and .NET assembly. This unique approach can potentially hinder analysis and make the malware more challenging to navigate and debug. Though the exact means of initial infection are not clear, it is suspected to involve a malicious executable, perhaps a program installer. The loading chain of DeadGlyph starts with a registry shellcode loader that extracts code from the Windows registry to load to different components, including the executor, which is x64, and the orchestrator, which is the .NET components. This malware is also modular, allowing threat actors to download new modules from a command and control server, enabling various malicious functionalities like creating new processes and reading files and collecting information from those compromised systems. This modular approach gives the threat actors the flexibility to tailor their attacks. The attackers, Stealth Falcon APT, have been active since at least 2016. They were initially exposed by Citizen Lab and they have been linked to Project Raven, an operation involving former U.S. intelligence operatives spying on targets critical of the UAE monarchy. Now, the group has been associated with exploiting zero-day vulnerabilities, making them a pretty sophisticated threat in the cyber espionage landscape. We are about to go down a rabbit hole on encryption with lots of super fun terminology. So please, please just bear with me. <laughs> I might have to take this segment a little bit slow to get all the technical bits correct. So yeah, just, just bear. <laughs> Recently, Signal, the encrypted messaging app used by over a billion people, made an important upgrade to its end-to-end -end encryption protocol, integrating quantum-resistant encryption keys. But what does that mean and why is it so crucial? So quantum computers, which leverage qubits, have the potential to perform complex computations much faster than current systems. This advancement, however, also poses a threat to existing encryption schemes, potentially rendering them vulnerable and leading to the decryption of encrypted data. One of the concerns with quantum computing is the quote, harvest now, decrypt later scenario. Even though the powerful quantum computers are not yet mainstream, the data encrypted today could be decrypted in the future once quantum computers become sufficiently powerful. So to address this threat, Signal has upgraded its encryption protocol to be quantum resistant, adding an extra layer of protection. This move is a preemptive measure against the possibility of quantum computers being powerful enough to break current encryption standards in the future. Signal has upgraded its existing Extended Triple Diffie-Hellman or X3DH key agreement protocol to the Post Quantum Extended Diffie-Hellman or the PQXDH. PQXDH integrates quantum resistant secret key generation mechanisms into Signal's end-to-end -end encryption specification. Specifically, PQXDH uses Crystal's Kyber, which is a NIST approved quantum resistant cryptographic algorithm suitable for general encryption and speedy operations involving quick exchange of small encryption keys. Rather than replacing existing elliptic curve cryptography foundations with a post-quantum public key crypto system, Signal takes a hybrid approach. It combines the elliptic curve key agreement protocol, which is X25519, with Crystal's Kyber. So by doing so, an attacker would need to break both of those systems to compute the keys protecting communications. 
For now, Signal will use both X3DH and PQXDH. When all parties in a conversation have the latest version of Signal installed, PQXDH will be used. If some participants are on the older versions of Signal, conversations will be encrypted with X3DH. Eventually, Signal plans to transition to using only the newer quantum-resistant algorithm. Signal's move to quantum-resistant encryption is a significant step towards ensuring the long-term privacy of all our communications. Biggest of shout outs to my Patreon supporters, especially my golden s'mores and their fur babies, for making the show possible since we don't have ads on the show at all except for talking about Patreon. And you can become a part of the s'mores and join all the fine folks over at patreon.com slash Shannon Morris. That page will give you early access to these very videos, a private Discord group, a monthly live streamed Q&A session, and even more from my Morse Code channel. If you are currently a patron on the Threatwire page, make sure to migrate over to the new one so you don't lose access to your perks. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story all about iPhone Zero Days. Now, I was researching the Apple Zero Days for this week's episode and saw news that even more vulnerabilities were just patched, which surprised me because I just covered some like a week or two ago on Threatwire. <laughs> Just days after rolling out their latest operating systems, Apple released emergency security patches for iOS, iPadOS, and watchOS. These updates are aimed at fixing zero-day vulnerabilities that could potentially expose your device to a nasty form of spyware. So if you own an iPhone, an iPad, or an Apple Watch, it is critical that you update your devices immediately. So for your iPhone and iPad owners, start by going into your settings, tap on general then select software updates and from there tap on update now for Apple watch users just open the watch app on your phone go to the my watch tab select general then software update and then install the latest update but why are we doing this what is going on so Google's threat analysis group revealed that these updates were a response to a zero-day exploit chain being used to install a spyware which is called Predator. This spyware is developed by an Egyptian commercial surveillance vendor called Intellexa. Now what's alarming is that Predator can record audio from phone calls, both regular and VoIP, and they can gather data from popular chat and calling apps like WhatsApp, Telegram, and even Signal. So you can see why this is so concerning. The way this attack works is through a man-in-the-middle technique, where an attacker tricks a victim into visiting an HTTP website. The attacker can then send fake data to the user, redirecting them to a site where the spyware is installed without the user needing to click on anything. These vulnerabilities were actively exploited in attacks targeting iPhone and Mac users, and Apple has since patched them. So update your devices, and if you are still concerned, you can also enable lockdown mode on your iPhone and iPad, reducing the attack surface and keeping your devices safer. Hey, I'm Shannon Morse. Make sure to stay vigilant, stay secure, and I will see you on the internet.